Welcome back to the lab. It's been a while since my last video, a huh? year and five months maybe. Sorry about that, it's been super busy with uh, MSG and uh, Super NT and all that stuff. But I haven't stopped doing other things. So in this video I'm going to talk about this display right here. What this is, this is a EL display, that's electroluminescent. It's 640 by 480 pixels, and I'm going to run Nintendo on this in the SPC player. Get a little better close-up of it. What this is, this was this DEC 265. This is some kind of surface mount pick-and-place machine, but this display must be used in it. But all they've done, they've just put a, there's like a little touch screen here, these little buttons. This whole thing's a touch screen, and then it just has this connector hooked up to it. I haven't used that, I probably won't use that. I'd really like to remove it off this display, but I don't want to damage it, so I haven't. The back side is a bit more interesting. There's a Xilinx XC3042A. This is 144 CLBs. There's an XC33, that's 100 CLBs. There's a little configuration EEPROM, as in OTP EEPROM, and that configures these two. They call them FPGAs. I kind of call them a CPLD, but whatever, it programs both of those and then it runs. And so what this is doing, there's a frame buffer, there's two uh, little S, uh, DRAMs here, kind of like off of a 30-pin SIM. And then there's a little SRAM right here. And that's pretty much it. There's uh, here and here, there are 240 uh, row drivers. It displays 480 pixels high. But what they've done is they've actually break the display up in two halves. So you can see the signals going to the top half, and then the signals are here again, and these are just connected up back up to here on the bottom side of the thing. So the first row is electrically connected to the 241st, and the 240th row is connected to the 480th row. And then along inside here with this cable, there are 1,280 column drivers because it's 640 pixels but it's red green and the display is in half so the bottom half has another 1,280 drivers up inside here. I don't know if they're chip scale or what kind of packaging that is but it's pretty damn dense. I think that's about it on the back. There's a uh, power supply here. This takes 12 volts and bumps it up to like plus and minus 240 or something like that. And I've always been curious about what these inductors do. And then these FETs, the switch between the inductors. I'm not really sure what any of that stuff does. I'd be really interested to learn. It's not like they say in the data sheet. So that's the display part. So I'm going to connect it to an NT mini board using this cable here. And that just plugs into this connector right here. So here's my adapter. All it is. It is a Coleco uh, cartridge adapter board for the NT Mini, and I just stripped the ends of the wires and soldered them to where the Coleco uh, cartridge connector would. And of course, I have my debug NT Mini board, and so this adapter will just, just plug in just like that, and then this plugs into the display. I'm going to put a box over this, like this, and cut a hole in it and let that cable out because that cable is really short and it basically has to hover above this board so this should make life a lot easier when I'm showing it off. Finding pictures of this display in actual operation was extremely difficult. I didn't really manage to find much other than say one or two images which I'll show but this first one this is from the uh, data sheet this is their like their little example which is kind of funny looks hilariously out of date now even though this display hails from 2000, so it's really not that old. This is one of the pictures of it actually operating, I found. And someone has it obviously connected to a computer of some kind, showing the bio screen. But speaking of colors, these are the colors out of the data sheet. It's obviously designed, it says VGA color, but it's really kind of EGA, I would say. So, but anyways, what they've done, they've mapped the VGA color as they call it to the AA1 which is this display here's a few random stills of games I got Mario 3 line of space head and since that thing is so reflective you can see me taking the picture of it Doki Doki Panic Pirate cartridge in this picture you can see a nice close-up of the 
pixels. You can see the actual pixels themselves. What I find interesting is the red pixels are maybe half the width of the green ones. Here it is hooked up to my NES core on the NT Mini there, plugged into that Coleco adapter. It's very playable. I mean, it's the frame rate's nice. It does have a frame buffer in it, but it seems to be pretty decent. I think it refreshes at about 60 hertz. So on the NES, there is a. It's basically like being in single buffer mode. It'll show a tear line. But I mean, I'm easily playing it right off of that display. So now we'll run another game here. Oh yeah, before I do that here, I'll just do this so you can see. Right over here, there's Mario running on the HDMI while I'm filming the display. Okay, enough of that. Here's Boulder Dash. Some green there. Ah, it looks pretty green through the camera, I guess. If I play it, you'll be able to see a little bit of, like, a tear line as it goes down the screen down again. Well, other than that, I mean, I'm getting the full 60 frames a second, and it looks pretty good. One thing I noticed for some of the darker shades, what that does is it has a 50% checkerboard that it toggles between every frame so they effectively get three shades for red and green so there's nine colors that that display can produce so to map them from in this case NES onto the display I convert it to YUV and then I use the luminance and select one of the colors based on luminance this effects Anna do Unfortunately, this is down here, this logo. It covers up part of the display, which kind of sucks. That's one another reason I wanted to get rid of it. Oh yeah, that sky's pretty green in that. And it's cut off at the top, so I can actually fix that. Let's see. Nope, wrong way. Using my debug interface. So it looks like... 22 pixels. There we go. All right, it's a little better. There we go. Let's try this. I like when it fades up and down how the colors cycle. Oh, that looks really weird with red and green like that because there is no blue on this display. Oh, I didn't hold the button down. You can turn the stars into birds. Oh, that water looks pretty good. Come here, frog. Yeah, Code Bastards is good enough. Oh, that's interesting. You can see where they changed the, the palette entries. Oh, that's pretty cool. That's normally off the sides and you can't see it. Ronnie the Super Rat. Ooh. I've actually beaten this game. Is that sad or what? One of Color Dream's finest. This look, this one looks pretty good too. I like the unrolling scroll effect when you start the game. Remember, emulators used to have lots of trouble with that for some reason. That's the other thing. Any like any aliasing like on these letters, it looks all funky. Yeah, that. I think that looks really cool. Why you have to put your name in this dumb? Oh, that's right, that cross is censored on the US version. They took the little rays away from it for some reason. 
I guess less cross power, I don't know. Oh, Simon's kind of green. Oh, that background looks really funky, too. It doesn't look bad, it just looks kind of weird. I also got the SPC player running on it. I like how the rainbow text at the top is being done with the RGY. That's funny, RGY, not RGB. So everything looks all nice and fluid and smooth and clean on it. Hope it's looking that way on the camera. So to end this video, I am going to uh, run a Kirby's Dreamland 3 audio track on there. I'll patch the audio in along with the video to match it, and that'll be the end of the video. But before then, thanks again for watching. I'll try to have another video up a lot sooner than this. Sorry it took so long, but I've just been super duper busy. i got a few minutes to do this. I have a bunch of other cool ideas I want to do. I've got like a flip dot controller I made last year that I want to post. i got like some VFD stuff. So it'll be really cool. So thanks again for watching, and here it is.